Hey everyone, welcome to episode 29. My name is Keshav and I'm the producer. Today's conversation is with the Deloitte Greenhouse team members, Kara and Rika, who respectively serve as the regional market lead and experienced designer for the Deloitte Greenhouse based in Halifax. They both joined Sam to discuss the very first launch of the Deloitte Greenhouse, uh, which is based at Dalhousie University. And they discuss their backgrounds, what led them to join this unique uh, group at Deloitte, and how the Deloitte Greenhouse came to be at the Rose School of Business. It's a really neat episode on a really cool topic that's brand new. Uh, the Deloitte Greenhouse at Dow is the first one in the world, and Sam and other Dow faculty have had the privilege of using the space, and currently it's available to members of Dalhousie, their faculty, and the Deloitte network. I've linked uh, to a website, uh, a Deloitte link actually, which uh, gives some more information on the greenhouse if you want to check that out, and also uh, a link to Kara and Rika's info in case you want to get in touch and learn more about them. Thanks and enjoy this episode. Hello and welcome to a special Deloitte Greenhouse edition of the Sam Taylor <laughs> podcast. Uh, before we get started, I would like to acknowledge that Dalhousie University is located in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq. We are all treaty people. All right, so welcome, uh, ladies, welcome here. I like to start off with a silly opener, uh, and this one is rather serious silly. So my question, which I will direct to you first, Kara, is the CEO of Spanx, uh, when they, she recently sold a large part of her company, uh, decided to share the wealth with her employees and gifted each one of them $10,000 and a first class ticket to anywhere in the world. Kara, where would you go? $10,000. Ha! Huh. I don't know. I have had the pleasure of traveling a lot for work. so. Am I allowed to donate my ticket? Uh, I think there are lots of folks that I could potentially donate it to uh, who would enjoy it more than me. Ooh, you know, I'm I'm going to say yes, but poor Rika is not going to be able to donate her ticket <laughs> and we'll make her fly somewhere. Uh, but, but fabulous. I, I think that that leads an interesting thread into perhaps where some of the conversation will lead. Because um, yes, you have been a world traveler. All right, Rika, uh, same question to you. <laughs> well, now Kara making me look bad. No, 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 <laughs> I'm, no, like, no, I'm going to be like, no, no Thailand. <laughs> give, me that, give me that ticket. I want it. <laughs> um, uh, and all, I feel like I'm so disparaged for travel. I want to travel so badly right now with COVID and everything. Um, so I'd probably say like Tahiti or Bora Bora or somewhere mm. hot and expensive and beautiful. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, welcome. And yes, I know it's we're in the depths and the redepths. Um, we're filming this on December 16th of 2021. So to provide some context, uh, final exams were canceled two days ago. Um, well, not canceled, sorry, moved online. <laughs> <laughs> some students, some very angry students were like, why did I have to do them? Sorry, moved online. <laughs> um, unless you're my students, then you had to do it on Monday, right before. <laughs> and you're like oh, really oh, upset no. that it was a Monday earlier. Um, but no, I think it's important still um, to dream and also to acknowledge uh, some powerful powerful women and some philanthropists um, and yet, and business owners and just that you can make profit and you can uh, live a life with purpose. And I thought that when Sarah Blakely uh, did that, um, what a boss move. And it definitely reignited some of my like, hmm, I want to go there thoughts. Okay. So how do, we, how do we know each other? Kara, like when did we first get connected and how, how does all this come to be? So you and I met uh, very early on in your days coming into work in uh, our space at Dalhousie. So you were what we call the guinea pig professor or instructor who uh, decided to take a leap of faith and have your class in a space that is very different and not considered your traditional teaching space. And so we connected as we shared with you what we do from a greenhouse perspective. Uh, hoping that we could uh, almost infect you in some ways around doing things a little bit differently uh, when you're teaching. And so that's how we met. Yeah, so I 
think there was some emails that bounced around during the summer. And then um, very quickly, as soon as we could get back in person, I met you in what is such a neat space uh, and truly a one of a kind. So our fifth floor, a classroom that I, at the row, um, a classroom that I used to teach in 5052, which was big, long tables in a very beige on beige on beige uh, room, quickly got transformed. Um, and we will um, definitely try our best to paint the picture into the Deloitte greenhouse on Dalhousie campus, uh, the first ever Deloitte greenhouse uh, to be in a university. So walking into the space, um, you know, definitely felt very welcome by the two of you. And also um, how I suspect my students um, felt the first day, like, what? I'm here? What? This is a classroom? Um, how, how does this work? So Rika, um, do you recall what it was like the moment you first stepped into the greenhouse space? Uh, I do. It was last summer as we were finalizing some of the design um, and having come into the space was a big exciting moment for me because I had done my co-op with the greenhouse before actually joining the team permanently. And so I had expected pre-COVID to actually be in the space more than I was. Yeah. Um, so actually getting to go in was a bit of a a bit of an exciting day for us because we didn't always have the ability to be on campus and even working in the same space. Um, so getting that early sneak peek last summer was very exciting. And there might be some very unfortunate photos of me in a the, the top chair that Kara then shared with our greenhouse team. <laughs> yes, Rika was in, I don't even think we had completely finished construction, but she no, was the hadn't. first guinea pig in the infamous top chairs to do a, a full rotation. Uh, on video. So if anybody has an opportunity to come visit us, the top chairs are truly one of those uh, unique features that tend to break the ice regardless of what's going on around you. <laughs> Completely. And so to paint a picture, the top chairs are literally giant chairs that are like spinning tops that are meant for one human to sit inside and then <laughs> lean back and do a rotation. And that is how I met my students um, for the first day of school. I saw the top hat so, sorry, top chair, and I took kind of attendance with their half mask faces and their four-year-old photos from intro and tried to match up the human name to the human picture um, all while in a top chat. You know, we have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, that's such a good skill for life. And hey, uh, I'll, I'll spare to instructors and students. So wait a minute, you put Rika in the top hat, top Chair. Spinny, spinny top chair um, before you <laughs> knew that a human could actually get out of it. Because at some point there's like a trust moment where you're like, yeah. I think it'll. Yes. Yeah. She was the intern at the time. <laughs> wow. Very <laughs> you, you can see the terror in my eyes in the picture. Like my, it's, yeah, it's not, it's not a good look, but it's fun. <laughs> Would recommend. Love it. Okay. So you mentioned being an intern and then, so when you say last summer, so that was that the summer of 2020. 2020? 2020, yeah, that would have been okay. summer 2020. So you were an intern in the summer of 2020. Um, and just to spoil it a bit, you were part of the Dal MBA uh, team. And then you were an intern at Deloitte. And now you are still at Deloitte. So how about you? I want to hear a bit about you, Rika. I want to hear about <laughs> how did you come to Dal? Um, how did you get involved with the greenhouse? And then what made you stick around? Yeah, I feel like that's going to be a long-winded question, but that's <laughs> fine. Um, so I did my undergrad at the University of Guelph in biomedical science with the original goal to go into medicine or some science domain at some point. But when I graduated, I realized I actually wasn't interested in being a doctor, and that was not at all a lifestyle I wanted. Um, and the MBA had always kind of been on my radar when I had graduated, but the pivot from science to business just seemed so terrifying. Mm -hmm. So I took some time. I worked retail and retail management for a while. And then I kind of got to a point where I was tired of the GTA. I was living in Burlington at the time. And so my partner was just finishing his MBA at Brock and I was tired of what I was doing. So I quit my job and we decided to move to Halifax. It seemed like a natural far transition. <laughs> um, I hadn't actually applied yet. I didn't know what I was gonna do, but we kind of took a leap of faith and decided to move across the country. Um, and so that was my moment. I was like, I guess the time is now if I'm gonna do it. So I applied to the MBA and it, it all kind of worked out from there. Um, with Dalhousie and it was an awesome experience as a student and and continuing through the program and into my residency and then the Deloitte Greenhouse just 
kind of was a stumble upon <laughs> experience. <laughs> um, as part of the, the CRMBA program, we have a number of employers come and speak to us. And we had had Deloitte con Consulting come and talk to us. But I had never heard of the Deloitte Greenhouse. And that job posting had come out a little bit after some of the initial, I know every year for the CRMBA program, um, the posting sometimes come out in different times, depending on employer timing. But for our years, we had a big drop of employer positions and a different roles. But the Deloitte Greenhouse one came like a couple days after just kind of trickled out. And I had no concept really of what it was. But reading the job description, I was like, yeah, there's, you know, there's a couple of things in there that sound kind of cool. I still don't really know what it is, but let's do it. Um, so I applied and I think I had asked in the interview or you had asked me what I knew about the greenhouse. And I was like, honestly, I couldn't find much. <laughs> so I don't, I, I'll try to answer that question. Um, and then same question to Kara. I had asked her like, what, what is the greenhouse? What will I be doing? And she had again, a bit of a leap of faith moment was like, I'm not, sh I'm not sure what this will be or what it will become, but if you're ready to try something different and be ready to, I don't know, pivot or adapt as we go, then, then this could be for you. So it kind of worked out from there and we work well together and it was an awesome experience through my residency, COVID included. Um, and I was really excited to come back after graduating. Long-winded, so, sorry, no, like I said. This is exactly <laughs> the perfect win. Um, <laughs> did the full-time job exist? Oh, maybe I'll ask Kara this. Did the full-time job exist um, for Rika um, during the session or was that something that kind of evolved? So uh, Rika is wholeheartedly, I remember the conversation we had. She's like, so what does my day-to-day -day look like? And I'm like, I have no idea. This is the first time that we are partnering with the Institute of Higher Education. It's the first time we're standing up a greenhouse, uh, partnering with someone else. So we'll see. Um, it's a bit of a bit of business development, a bit of, you know, starting a business. So there's the entrepreneurial piece. And then everything we thought it was going to be changed a month and a half into it because COVID hit. Um, so it it was a bit of a leap of faith to, to figure out what what we needed to do. Um, but we're there now and it seems to be working well. Uh, when we had originally set it up, it was just going to be me on site at the space from a, from a full-time perspective. Uh, we had Rika on board uh, and made the decision that we couldn't let her go. So as soon as we were able to, uh, a position opened up from a national perspective. So when we went, when COVID hit, we started to resource nationally and so when a national greenhouse position opened up i snagged it and said i know someone who can do this so we uh, created the position and made it local so i love it especially because that highlights what we often um like profs um, business professionals uh tell our students is like you are always interviewing for your next job at your current one you know, yep. if you if you put in all your effort, that's what's going to lead you to your next opportunity. Sometimes it's with the same employer, even if there's no spots available at the moment, you know, or sometimes it'll lead to them referring you to another really great space, or sometimes it's somebody checking in. Like it, it all, it all comes full circle. So it's really important to always, you know, do your best and also try to pick areas that excite you that you know um are intriguing that are something you want to try and people that you want to work with and trusting those gut gut feelings but also not being too calculated because you know <laughs> Rika if you had known exactly what you wanted to do um this opportunity may not have unfolded the way that it did and then um you know judging by our past conversations you are extremely excited and thrilled to be where you're at Yes, I feel very lucky to be where I am. And I will say I might have been a bit a bit needy as well after I, I had left the greenhouse and I kept in contact with Kara and, and the greenhouse team and was constantly just doing a little, hey, like, I'm, st <laughs> I'm still here. I'm graduating at this time. Maybe, I don't know. Keep yeah. me in mind. <laughs> graduating in 65 days, 65 days. 65 days. Yeah. <laughs> good. It's good to like stay and stay in touch, right? And to have those organic relationships and you know, judging by what I've observed of like your chemistry and our chemistry individually and collectively, it's, it's when it works, it's just fun, right? Work doesn't have to be bad. It doesn't have to be a sentence. It should be fun. It should be doing cool things um, with fun people. 
So that's fabulous. Before we get too much further along, I would like to hear Kara's long-winded uh, version of how she came to be at the greenhouse. How I got here. Uh, so my background is very uh, varied. I think my father refers to it as I went through my 20s and 30s checking off all the things I didn't want to do when I grew up. Uh, so had started off in engineering, then did classical studies and political science, did some community-based social work, uh, ended up getting my MBA and then worked in public policy for a bit, and then joined a boutique consulting firm in Oakville that focused on accelerating team-based decision-making. So facilitated discussions around strategy and alignment. Um, and that's where I spent the bulk of my career, ended up getting acquired by Deloitte. So Deloitte was a purchase uh, or purchased us, and then spent, I would say the last sort of 10 years before this role in consulting. So in human capital consulting um, and, and really trying different things in Deloitte. So I had the opportunity to, to do lots of different things within Deloitte that I probably wouldn't have done if I was anywhere else, just because there's so many opportunities and different things you can do. And then this opportunity just arose. I sort of heard through the grapevine that they were opening a greenhouse and I'm like, Oh, that sounds fun. Um, and reached out to the the partner who was leading it up, reached out to our managing director and said, I really want to do this. And they're like, all right, go talk to the right people. And if anybody, if everybody's aligned, then off you go. So it, it, uh, it was a bit of a serendipity for everything coming together. But uh, my background is very varied from a little bit of everything, uh, a bit of, nope, don't want to do that tried this. Nope, don't want to do that. <laughs> and so there's a lot of exploration and experience to get me to where I am here, um, which I think speaks to that career path piece, right? Like I would have never thought I would have ended up here. And the career path I took was more around experiences and exploration versus I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this. Just playing devil's advocate a little bit, sometimes students think, oh, shoot, if I do X, but it doesn't lead to Y, then X is wasted. What are your thoughts? Do you feel like you wasted time doing your engineering and classical studies? No, especially, and, and again, consulting is a bit of a different beast because you can bring all those things to bear. And certainly uh, in the role in the greenhouse, the, the little bit of social work and understanding how groups work uh, both community and business groups. The little bit of engineering, when you're in a, a group with folks who have an engineering background from a business perspective, you've got insight into the language they speak and how they do it. Um, classical studies, there's always something that you can bring to bear from a classics perspective, <laughs> even if it's just for trivia night. Um, there's always <laughs> some sort of, so I would say all those experiences and knowledge come together in interesting and different ways. Uh, and you can you can bring them to bear in whatever you're doing. You just have to figure out how to do it. Um, and I think that's part of the fun of yeah. the discovery is how do I how do I get to incorporate and bring all the cool things that I know and have experienced to the people that I'm working with and the people that I'm working for. Yeah, I would very much agree. So. In speaking of that, it's like when you're somewhere, you can look backwards and say, hey, what are my varied experiences and the skills that I can kind of smush together and present here and like, and they excite me. And then on a forward looking basis, knowing that whatever your next step or steps or, you know, paths are, that it's all okay. Like it's, it's all okay. Are you being, you know, a good human? Are you treating others with kindness and respect? Are you honoring yourself? Um, you know, are you trying hard? Right. Do you have a good attitude? Like control the controllables and have, have some fun. So hopefully that gives some permission out there. Now, we kind of alluded to, and we've talked about the greenhouse as being a creative space, but really, what is the greenhouse? What is the Deloitte greenhouse? <laughs> so uh, from a Deloitte perspective, we bring in our clients to deal with what we call adaptive challenges. So those are the big, crunchy concerns, issues uh, that they just couldn't solve sitting around a boardroom table. Uh, we layer on a bit of, uh, we call it theatrics, but it's not really theatrics, but we do push the creativity um, so that people think and act differently than they would if they were just in a meeting. So for an example, we have a meeting coming up um, in the new year and we're layering on a Grand Prix theme. 
which admittedly Rika and I are probably way too excited about the coveralls. <laughs> We're gonna um, look so cool. <laughs> <laughs> but we've created a two day agenda that speaks to the team in the room or the pit crew. Everything that they're doing as they think about their strategy are, is through the metaphor of creating a race day strategy. Uh, and so it gives them the opportunity to think differently about what it is they're trying to solve. Um, and when they walk into the room and see the top chair and see Rika and I in coveralls with a little bit of grease on their on our faces, it gives them the permission to be a bit goofy, to say things they wouldn't normally say, to think about things in ways that they wouldn't normally think about it. And so it creates this immersive experience to push creativity and problem solving in a way that it wouldn't normally happen. Fabulous. Yeah. Um, we even had kind of um, a meeting a few months ago where I got to see a brief, a brief glimpse of that um, in action when um, the Deloitte uh, CEO from Canada came in and various Del Dalhousie and Deloitte people. Do you like how I almost combined them? Dalhousie? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I came together. We and have done that before. <laughs> <laughs> Not hard. Um, to come together and have sort of a coffee chat. And then there was the metaphor of coffee was reinforced. There was a fabulous graphic, which I found out later, uh, Rika had drawn, um, got some really amazing markers. Um, uh, what was it, a projector to sketch it onto? And just really looking at it, creativity, um, really just exemplified, you know, and then coming up with this, hey, our opener will be talking about what kind of coffee best represents us and having that discussion and then talking about how um, we envision using the greenhouse, how we envision potential partnerships and really layering on that metaphor. So it was really cool to be a part of that immersive experience while also talking about future potential immersive experiences. So um, I definitely, definitely appreciated both observing and being a part of that. Yeah. I, all those skills, okay? And like, so I'm sure when people are like, what does a typical day look like? You're like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> my my partner that yeah. day was like, what Like, what are what are you going in early for? As I like <laughs> hold my projector out and was leaving for the office and I sent him a couple of pictures and he's like, so what is it that you actually do? Because sometimes <laughs> I have a clear idea and then other days I find out you were tracing on a whiteboard for an hour. <laughs> so I just have no concept of what your job actually is. I'm like, yeah, it's fair. It's nice though. I like the variability. <laughs> oh my gosh. And speaking of like a new, new grad, new MBA grad, so not new grad in the sense that you just completed your undergrad, but you know, as um, emerging, you know, early to mid career professional, right? Um, the fact that your inclination appears to be, yes, like, what do you do? Yes. Like, right. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's something I'd like to highlight because sometimes um, I will just tell you that one of my, my first times um, working in a firm, so post undergrad, uh, I remember just standing around um, by the photocopier and one of my colleagues, so same level comes up to me and is like, who does our photocopying? And I just looked at him and I'm like, that's you. And the, 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 just the face of like, I don't want to do my photocopying paired with, how do you use this thing? Like it was just <laughs> of these world, like come together and crumble and explode all at once. And really just how do we as educators prepare students, um, you know, undergraduate, graduate level. And part of me is like, I don't know if we can do anything to, you know, kind of contribute to the good attitude other than to let them know, like the part of the job is just, yes. And like have fun with it and not saying like, oh, I have this degree, therefore I wouldn't, um, I don't want to do this, but saying like, hey, how cool is it that I get to do this and I can, you know, one day trade, go in early and trace and be a contributing team member that way. And then what was it? Um, two weeks ago, I ran into you and you were co-hosting um, an innovation lab um, remotely um, and really were providing the muscle behind the agenda. So like, what is your job? What does your average day look like? Yes, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. And I don't know, I don't like back to the question you had asked around how do you prepare people for that? I think it's just one of those things where you have to be open and willing to like, I don't know if that is something that you necessarily teach, but I think it also has come down to like, I've had some very strange jobs that I haven't necessarily loved, but I've always come out of them with like a greater appreciation mm -hmm. for people that then end up doing those jobs is like, yeah, that's, that sucked. I didn't like it, but now I appreciate people that 
do that. But I also did, even though I might have hated it, did have something that I took away from it. So even if it is a mundane job or if it's something that maybe doesn't seem like it provides value, I know that it will in the end and I'm going to have some sort of takeaway from it, whether it's good or bad, or I will learn from it in some way. And that's not necessarily related to the greenhouse as well. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, what about you, Kara? What, uh, and just layering onto that question, what kind of, what should I be telling my students? What should I be uh, training them for? Understanding that part of this podcast is kind of like my meta agenda, but you know, like what else can I do as an educator to kind of help give uh, these fourth year, certain fourth year management students the best kind of leg up when they enter into the workforce. And I think to build on Rika's, it is about every experience matters. I remember when things first got shut down for COVID, right? Like we primarily did in-person facilitation. And in two days, we had to stand up a completely new different way of how we did the work that we did. Um, and we were all like, okay, let's figure it out. Um, and so taking from those experiences and being open to just going with it, right? It was uncomfortable for all of us. It wasn't at the beginning particularly fun for any of us, <laughs> um, but it was it was what we needed to do. And so we just embraced the uncomfortable and embraced the experience, took from it what we what we could and and dove in. And I think the ability to just recognize that uncomfortable is OK um, mm -hmm. and it's actually good. Right. Like when we have teams in the in the space, we warn them ahead of time. You are going to feel probably a bit uncomfortable today. The things we're going to ask you to do. And that's OK. That's why we're actually asking you to do it so that you're tapping into different different uh, ideas and experiences in a way that you haven't before. So the uncomfortableness starts to breed um, a different way of thinking and and different experiences. So that uncomfortable, although not fun, is something that we wholeheartedly think folks should embrace. Absolutely. The Dalai Lama, in one of his books that I was reading, uh, said that one of his best meetings came when I believe somebody sat in a chair, either him or one of his guests, and broke it right at the beginning of the meeting. And then everybody, it was a very stern, serious meeting. And then the moment somebody sat in the chair and it broke, the whole room, you know, paused and then saw the person who felt like laughing and everybody laughed and gave permission, right? You mentioned permission before. Yeah. It's like, be silly. We can be here discussing difficult things, doing hard things, um, but we can have a smile on our face and we can invite, you know, that creativity and that landscape. So yeah, just in the Dalai Lama was like, I feel like every meeting should start with a break. <laughs> <laughs> that, that definitely ran through my head a few times entering the greenhouse. So I want to further discuss what the greenhouse at Dalhousie is because it is um, so unique. Um, in fact, it is the first time that there's ever been a Deloitte greenhouse on a campus in the world. Is that correct? That is correct. Mm -hmm. We are the pilot project for the International Greenhouse. So, <laughs> and no pressure. Like, <laughs> I was <laughs> told that about a day or two before because then you followed up with, and you are the first educator yes. to ever be in one of these. And I was like, okay, gonna, gonna ensure that we're stepping up the A game. Um, it's the A plus game. Um, and so I, I wanna share with you um, briefly how we used it. Uh, and that was, you know, co-create, um, first working with my TA to create some active learning activities. We always do, um, Adele, try to, you know, get students to apply things because that's what you need to do in the workplace. So it's like learn, do, teach. <clears throat> Part of that doing is being immersive and really taking it a step further. So I worked with Anna, our TA, and we created some active learning activities for the first four or five classes. And then students had to go in groups of three and create their own active learning for various topics throughout the semester and use the space, use the space um, in a creative way, really focusing on both accurate content, but also engagement. So they were marked and evaluated on engagement. And I will tell you that I am so glad that I, I tried to provide direction, but with very little like do this and this and this, because the creativity that came from them was um, more than I could ever, ever come up with. <laughs> so for example, um, we had Jeopardy, which was fabulous. Awesome. Um, we had, you know, some good quizzes and some, and, but different. Some were team-based, some were race-based, some were MCQs, some were, you know, kind of um, a minute to win it. 
sort of um, scenario. <laughs> <laughs> and we played squid game at school. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> zero technology but the space allowed for um everybody like they're like start at the back of the room and then it was big steps and you start to see people's competitive spirits come out and <laughs> even though, like, oftentimes some students brought prizes some didn't but that didn't impact the engagement in the sense that people wanted to demonstrate their knowledge they wanted to get you know nitty-gritty with it and you know it was just a really, really fun um, thing because I hadn't ever kind of co-created accounting curriculum, especially for, you know, a very difficult technical um, accounting topic before. And so, you know, I definitely, when they were uncomfortable, I was uncomfortable and we got <laughs> through it together and I finalized grades last night. And I just want to say like, thank you um, to you both for being right down the hall for basically every class for every email um, and any time there was either a tech issue or a perceived issue um, and just space, you know, how do I open this door? How do I do this? And being very welcoming. And I know our students, um, I'm excited for them to see this and get to meet the real, the real team behind um, all of the efforts. So cheers to you, salute to you and cheers to our pilot students because they are the pilot students as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> And, and I think the ability for them to dive in and embrace, right? I can only imagine walking into that space the first day of class and going, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Like it, it doesn't look like a classroom. It doesn't feel like a classroom. All the things you would expect for a classroom are not there. Um, and, and to embrace the experience and just run with it and have fun with it, right? The, the, the space is built to have fun and to engage and immerse. And I'm I am grateful that the students actually sort of put all their uncomfortableness aside and dove in two feet uh, to make it really what it should be and what we were hoping it to be. We, you know, when we started this journey, we didn't have any idea what it was going to be like or how it was going to be perceived by the university. You know, we knew from our our perspective from a client perspective how the space would get used um, but didn't have any line of sight into um, the acceptance from the professors or the instructors or the students um, and the the feedback we've been getting has been great um, we're you know constantly getting can we use a room can we use a room mm -hmm. so you know <laughs> we've been trying to to be as accommodating as possible so that um, everybody has the opportunity to get in there and to experience it and to have their students experience it in a way that is impactful for them. So we're super jazzed to be there. And, you know, we're happy to be down the hall and to help out any way we can, because that's part of our mission, not just to, to sort of serve our clients, but also to serve the community in a way that's different. And and the Dalhousie community is one of those one of those stakeholders. And, you know, look, Rika and I are going to be completely honest. <laughs> we much prefer going to work on campus at Dalhousie, yes. <laughs> there's an energy, like there's just an energy around yeah. being around students that is way more fun for us. So, you know, we're happy to be there to help you. <laughs> yes, definitely. And I will say one of my favorite aspects of the semester was coming in the day after your class <laughs> and we had it on Tuesdays and Thursdays and seeing all the different ways that students had set it up the day before before for class this is different every single time so clearly the space was being utilized in a, a maximal potential way <laughs> well i'm glad that was yeah evident definitely not that you were like why didn't you set it back up <laughs> oh no we were like what were they doing yesterday yeah, exactly <laughs> like what happened <laughs> Paint a picture for everybody. There is um, a modular couch on one side. There's a whole uh, line of whiteboards. There's two smart boards at the front. Um, then there's more whiteboards, some beautiful windows, um, whiteboards at the back that open on these barn doors to a secret cafe. Um, <laughs> and then an extra storage space for more chairs and um, and tables. And then in the space itself, there's you know just lots of modular options with standing up, um, sitting down tables, um, lots of chairs with kind of individual desks, lots of, um, oh my gosh, just tables and chairs. And we call them poofs. I don't know if they're actually, they're like footstools, but yeah, you sit the on poofs. them. And then there's, poofs. Okay. Yeah. And then <laughs> modular tables that you can either sit at or, you know, put stuff on. So lots of like, there's limitless options. Um, and then also the spinny top chairs. And so. And the 
and the surface hubs. Oh my gosh. And the service hubs, which were <laughs> amazing. Um, so my prof, my prof friends actually came in and uh, the other fourth year accounting profs were like, I want to see like what, what y'all up to in the greenhouse space. And so they came in and it happened to be one where we were rotating between um, whiteboards and surface hubs. And, um, and then it was, they, they watched me do a presentation. Uh, they watched me do a kind of a lesson and walk through. And then it was a contest on who could get the fastest and most accurate. And then they had to swap and mark, mark each other's. And yeah, like my prof friends were like, wow, like what's going on? <laughs> and by the end, they were like, oh, like, you know, how are the grades going to be transferred? Like what, what's the reward? What's this and that? And I was like, oh no, there's nothing. And they were like, what? And I was like, no, 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 like this, the reward is like the learning. Like this part is like, this, this is it. And they were like, they were just floored. And it's part of like the excitement that comes from the space. It's part of the testament of the good group of the students, you know, and just like more fun and getting things done. So, and then it doesn't necessarily, um, you know, need to be about, and no, uh, no, no shade thrown to one of my colleagues at a different university, but like, you don't have to bring juice boxes and pop tarts to like motivate the students, right? Like they're motivated because they're at an amazing school with amazing classmates and they want to go out and, you know, change the world. And it starts with, you know, every day. So that's what the space looks like. And then the arrangement at Dalhousie. So Dal gets it Mondays and Wednesdays and half yep. a day Friday. Yep. And then Deloitte gets it for Tuesday, Thursdays and half a day Friday. Yeah. Um, and then with what types of, um, I guess, kind of paint the picture a little bit from there. So you would use it um, sometimes in partnership with Dow for social innovation yes. and then sometimes for client work. So this is also like a Deloitte greenhouse. Yeah. So Tuesdays and Thursdays, we uh, try to pack it full with uh, our clients. And so <laughs> having them come in to uh, address their crunchy questions or adaptive challenges, um, for those, again, we layer on the metaphor and, and design the session and, and bring together the right folks from a, a Deloitte perspective. And the unique thing is we now have the opportunity to tap into Dalhousie research mm -hmm. um, and knowledge that we don't anywhere else in the in the Deloitte network when we're doing these labs. So there, there's an added bonus there. Um, and then the joint Friday piece, we're working with folks in the management uh, faculty to create, as you had alluded to, Sam, the social innovation space, where we are able to go to the community combined as Deloitte and Dalhousie to tap into community groups and support them in a way that we wouldn't be able to do individually. But together, we think there's great power in helping them to work through some of their crunchy, cha crunchy challenges that they wouldn't normally be able to access us or Dalhousie. So, we're super jazzed about that. Um, we do have one on the docket that we're going to uh, hopefully get in in February. So uh, we're super jazzed about being able to just do what we do differently and for different folks. Mm -hmm. And I like to build on that, Kara. I feel so lucky as well to be out here and that we have this partnership to be able yeah. to show up so differently. Like, I think that this partnership with Dalhousie allows us to be so unique compared to some of the other greenhouses, just being on that separate institution. And again, having been a student at Dalhousie, it's really awesome too. And having been in the faculty of management as a student, I do know like Dean Brooks and a number of the people that we're partnering with. So now it's really awesome to be able to come back and work with and collaborate with and regularly talk to some of these yeah. professors and faculty members that I really appreciated and looked up to uh, like during my time as a student as well. So it's really awesome. And, and Sam, a special kudos to you. Uh, simply because I know we've got stuff coming up in the new year that we've never done before from a Deloitte perspective that I suspect hasn't been done before from a Dalhousie perspective um, that will give us an opportunity to impact students in a way that we haven't before. So super jazzed about that. Like it really is. Um, Enrique has seen me do it. Well, you've seen me do it too, where we sit down and we start talking and ideas just start flowing about all the different things that we can do um, to impact the community. Dalhousie, Deloitte, like to bring it all together in a way that has just never happened before. And the opportunities truly are endless. And, you know, that's that's the part that gets certainly me jazzed. And I know Rika gets on the, the bandwagon <laughs> with me as we start thinking of all the fun things that we can do. Um, but this partnership, I think, has opened doors in ways that we hadn't considered before. 
uh, from a direct impact on students. And so thank you for that, for being willing to uh, step mm -hmm. out of the norm with us <laughs> as we yeah. are a bit crazy, like not even <laughs> traditional sort of, here's how we're going to teach. Uh, so that's been super fun for us. And I think, I think it will pay dividends. And if we can get it to work once in a pilot, then the sky's the limit, right? So. Absolutely. Yeah. And so with that, you've been so open to different things that I'm personally interested in and passionate about, you know, empowering management learners. Um, typically, my domain tends to be accounting, but it's not limited to accounting learners. It's really, you know, management learners, the ones that we're surrounded with and saying, hey, what's what are items that our stakeholders want? Our stakeholders being our learners, also the community, um, employers, and saying, how can we help bridge the gap? Because when I was teaching in the professional program, when students would say, or candidates there would say, you know, it felt like I learned one thing in university and then I was expected to know something or quickly know something there. So my mission is to hopefully help, you know, just flatten the curve uh, a little bit, I don't know, right? Um, to help bridge the gap in order to connect the two, um, whether it's an actual um, difference or perceived difference, or just the more that we can partnership and the more that we can try out new and cool and fun things, um, that not only will give them the opportunity to experience that, then also perhaps um, observe it as well, right? Observe and hear the stories of, hey, this is what we tried and this went well, and this is, hey, this is what we tried and this is what we'll do better like next time, or this is what we learned from it. And yeah, so it's, it's definitely been fun. My, I had a question come in though from a student. Uh-oh. They're like, okay. I know, right? This, I'm sorry. <laughs> they were like... <laughs> funny that you say that because that was my most concerning <laughs> part about being a prof is like when the students can ask you stuff. <laughs> Maybe I'll pass, Kara. <laughs> no, and I, I don't know if there is an obvious answer to this or if it's been something that's come up or, you know, but I'll go for it. Um, so why did Deloitte choose Dow for this? That is a great question that I don't have a fulsome uh, answer. I know that we had uh, the previous president and our managing partner were together at an innovation event and started talking about what if. Yeah. Um, and it it spawned from there. Um, but I can get the actual history. Um, admittedly, I wasn't around when we, when we started <laughs> no. that piece, but yeah, it, it, it spawned from a conversation. Uh, about innovation and and a what if, and I think that that's that's great. I don't think it necessarily needs um, like a clear linear you know item because it sounds like it's likely you know there's lots of leadership changes from one to another. There's lots of personnel changes. Did you come um, from Deloitte, um, Toronto, out here for this, or were you already here? I was already out here. I had moved out yeah. here two years before. Um, yeah. And then saw this and went, oh, that's totally what I want to do. But I had I had been out here, but traveling. So I my home base was here, but I probably spent, I would say, at most maybe a week every two months actually here. And so for me, this was an opportunity to actually uh, have an impact where I lived. And so that was another one of those things that for me personally was important when I saw the opening come up, because I had been, I would say the last 10 years, the 10 years before joining had been on the road. I would say I was probably home at a home base for a month out of every two months or a, a week out of every two months. And oh, wow. so this was an opportunity to live and impact where I worked. So. Fabulous. I want to dig into that a little bit. Um, would you be comfortable with sharing um, yes. some of the countries that you have um, worked uh, worked in and maybe yes. broadly some of the projects without kind of... Um, yeah, so I've worked in Doha uh, in Qatar. on uh, It was a higher ed project around um, revamping uh, strategy from a college perspective. Uh, lots in the U.S. from insurance through to... Um, big construction. So the U.S. sort of runs the gamut, have been in the U.K. for 
uh, car manufacturing. So it, yeah, it really just sort of runs the gamut. Um, yeah, and and the- Where the, haven't you been? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I was like, you've got 10 grand to travel. I'm like, I actually just want to stay home. Yeah. Can someone else travel? <laughs> so I'm taking Kara's ticket. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and I asked, yeah, I asked that because, you know, sometimes students want a number of different things in their career and they're not quite sure what, what's the example or how do I, how do I put it all together for myself? And, you know, can I travel internationally? And what if I, you know, don't want my CPA? What if, and it's like, cool, if you don't want your CPA, don't get your CPA. Um, neither one of these uh, two wonderful humans have their CPAs um, and they have, you know, forged a wonderful career path, right? So it's like, there's, you have options, really focus on those skill bases. And it sounds like saying yes, because I doubt you get into international travel by saying no to things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, there's, there's a whole lot of, there's a whole lot of, that sounds like fun. Um, and look, the experiences, I would say international travel and working internationally is, is really important to getting um, experiences that you just wouldn't get anywhere else. Um, the amount of uh, stuff that I learned about humans and people and interactions in Doha was probably more than anywhere else that I ever learned on a project mm -hmm. because it's a very different culture. We got to be there during Ramadan. Like there were just so many experiences and things that we we were able to tap into that you just wouldn't get anywhere else. Um, and I think that starts to create that picture of a whole human um, and what what it means to you know have empathy for folks that aren't like you. And, and so if you have the opportunity to travel and work internationally, I would say absolutely that's a say yes. Um, but I also recognize, you know, it comes a point in your career where I'm like, I just want to stay home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would give up my ticket, my first class ticket anywhere to stay home. <laughs> I think that reinforces it, right? Based on what yeah. you said. Um, fabulous. So there was, I want to give Deloitte a little bit of a shout out, um, directly because, um, <laughs> I heard from one of my former students, uh, who's now working there that um, they knew somebody, they thought they wanted to go into accounting, and then they end up going into a different service line, either consulting or tax, either a CPA stream or not a CPA stream. And one of the reasons why I'm fuzzy on the details is because she's like, well, it really ultimately doesn't matter because we have one Deloitte. Um, would either one of you want to kind of elaborate what one Deloitte means, um, both in general and also how it could be applicable to um, a recent Dal grad? Yeah, so Rika, do you want to take it from a recent Dow grad perspective? Yeah, definitely. So I think something that's awesome, and again, that one Deloitte aspect is the fact that we are one firm. So we're constantly drawing on each other from an information standpoint, like we are bringing in SMEs for our greenhouse labs, subject matter experts from anywhere across the firm, anywhere across the country, and we can tap them on the shoulders and say, hey, can you come and support us on this? And they're like, yeah, definitely. We need some context, but, but we're, as long as it's yeah. in the calendar, great. Um, but there's that component. But then from an actual working perspective, like I potentially could have the opportunity to work elsewhere in the firm if I so chose to left, leave the greenhouse. Um, we have someone right now on our team who's on a secondment elsewhere in the firm, I think in consulting. So she technically lives within the greenhouse, but is working eight months in consulting. So there's so many opportunities, whether you actually want to make that lateral move or just dip your toe in um, into something that you wouldn't normally experience. There's so many opportunities and there, it's a huge network and people are always open to having those conversations and coffee chats about what they do and what opportunities exist. So it's kind of like a world is your oyster kind of situation in the world of Deloitte because there are so many broad offerings and even the greenhouse, there are people within Deloitte that don't even know we exist. So there's so many things that are within the firm too that you have you just don't even know about until you have that experience or bump elbows with someone that is elsewhere in the firm you hadn't heard of. But Kara would have an even broader image of that too. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think one of the advantages of Deloitte is um the ability and the willingness to uh, share resources and to give the uh, what we call a Deloitte only experience. And so these are some of the experiences that could only happen at Deloitte, um, which I think is what you were alluding to, Sam, around the look, 
may not be the right path for you, but let's find what the right path is because we want your great talent and we want to make sure that we get you what you need or the experiences you want or need to make those decisions as long as you stay with us, right? Like let's, let's figure out how we get you what you need so that um, you're experiencing the right things, but ultimately we want to keep great talent. And so whatever we can do to get those experiences and, and have folks experience as much as possible um, and still stay with us is, is great. Um, and there's, you know, I make the joke of, I have yet to find a client issue problem or um, that doesn't have someone in Deloitte who has either an expertise or has some knowledge about how to deal with it. Um, and I have tried. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, there's actually two angles that I'm coming at that question with. Um, one is, well, actually, that whole expertise thing. I was having a conversation with a local CFO. He moved out here from Alberta to to work with um, a company that's going public. And one of the things he said is, "Darn, when I like left one of the big four firms, he's like, I just miss being able to pick up the phone and like hitting an expert. He's like, now I pick up the phone and it's twelve hundred dollars to talk to somebody that might be able to solve my problem, sort of, maybe." <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. I was like, I'm like, buddy, you are the expert now. He's like, not really. <laughs> so I found that was, yeah, it's something that you don't quite realize perhaps until you've experienced it or until it's gone. So I think that's really wonderful to share. Um, yeah, one of the angles I was coming at is, you know, a large amount of the students who may be listening are either accounting students or, or want to be accounting majors or deciding to do their CPA. And we often hear from that stream, okay, I'll go to a firm, I'll get my experience, and then I'll leave. And it's like, well, that's cool. But how about you, if you want to go to the firm and you feel like there's value in going to a firm and you feel like there's value in getting that experience, what if you did all that and then look for opportunities first to grow and stay in an environment that you're comfortable with and shift before looking externally? So not saying don't look externally, but just saying like also look internally, because especially with that, um, with the one Deloitte item coming up where it's not just promo, like I've actually lit, talked and heard and yeah. seen people experience it. Yeah, there, there's, you know, again, yeah. uh, most of my career, once I joined Deloitte, yeah. was checking the things off the list again, right? Like, let's try this, let's try this, let's try this. Um, and, and folks are open to it, right? Like, I got to try lots of things. I used to be based in Toronto. I wanted a bit of a lifestyle change and said, oh, I really like to be out east. So I was able to move out east. I've had internal roles that were sort of internal to Deloitte. I've had external roles that are client facing. Um, it, it, there really are a world of opportunities. So yeah, my, my advice there to them uh, would be don't leave until you leave. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then the other... Um, but even other, when you leave, stay in contact. Fair. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, and then the other group um, I wanted to talk to would be the non, perhaps, um, either undergrad, BCom majors, um, perhaps it's a master's of information student, um, perhaps it uh, where they're typically looking towards um, data management or archivist positions in a library, but perhaps they are, they are passionate about data management, you know, um, perhaps there are STEM majors and graduates um, and under, uh, graduate students and undergraduate students, and perhaps there are recreation management um, majors. Are all, all of these roles that possibly could fit if the, if the human was the right fit? Absolutely. So I uh, came from consulting in our consulting practice and the breadth of knowledge and roles and uh, information that we want to have within Deloitte that we can bring our clients is almost infinite, right? And so good people with good skills that are able to connect with a client need uh, you know, within consulting, there is no shortage of opportunities mm -hmm. and and ways to um, bring your skills to a client setting, regardless of what they are. Like, it, yeah, especially in consulting, it, it's a bit harder in sort of the designated professional areas like accounting and tax, where there's a deep a deep sort of um, required knowledge, but not that there isn't in consulting, but it can be in just about anything. Mm -hmm. um, because 
their clients have all these problems and we want to be able to bring what we consider a one Deloitte approach, which is the client deals with Deloitte, but we have the opportunity and the ability to bring all these different services together to meet their needs under one roof. Perfect. Uh, so, in, oh, do I mix this up a little bit? Um, yeah, I kind of do. Um, <laughs> we heard a lot about your company and a lot of bit about what you do there and all these cool and awesome things. I'm not saying that's not fun, but what do you do when you're not in the greenhouse? Like, what would I catch you guys doing on the weekends or evenings or perhaps at two o'clock on a Wednesday? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I actually teach yoga in Halifax part time as well. On Tuesday evenings, I teach with um, our studios in the city. So I'm a registered or a, what is it? RYT, registered yoga instructor, um, which is really fun. It's something I'm really passionate about. So it's nice that I, I have some time on Tuesday nights to be able to, <laughs> I literally go from the office to the studio on Tuesdays and teach yeah. my classes. Um, but it's something I'm really passionate about and really enjoy doing on, on my off time. But otherwise it's usually yoga or I do a lot of hiking because I live mm. out, out by the ocean um, or, or reading usually, or hanging out with friends, usually with friends yeah. a lot on the weekend too. But yeah. Simple. Yeah. Uh, I have two wonderful rescue pups mm -hmm. uh, that I uh, gladly spend the bulk of my time with. Um, they're both a bit neurotic and have their own issues that they need to deal with being rescues and not having great uh, starting points, but they are wonderful animals. And so, yeah, during the summer, we're in the backyard in the water doing what we can and fall, winter, and spring, we're hiking in the woods, getting away from it all and giving them a chance to run and me a chance to ooh, press a <laughs> bit and yeah. <laughs> I remember one of our first online meet, uh, virtual meetings when I got to meet Al uh, and your pups, and then I was like, "Oh, mine too, too!" Like, it was lovely. <laughs> yep. Just um, kind of makes everything. I don't know. For me, like walking in the door, it's hard to have a bad day once you see that face. Because that yeah. face doesn't oh, care. Right. It's like, come oh, here, I see you. <laughs> so wiggly. Yes. yes. Oh my gosh, Rupa! I just saw your bookcase. Wow. Yes, Fabulous. I'm in my parents' home right now in Ontario. <laughs> so these are all of my childhood books. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't even have to because I was just like, I just thought books. I'm like, fabulous. Yeah. So you've yes. always, yeah, always been a reader. I can yes. definitely, definitely <laughs> relate. And I love that. So just circling back, because we are getting kind of towards the end of our time here, um, focused on not even like Dal necessarily, but the people that are completing either their undergrad or graduate programs and who are looking to, you know, go into the world as it is right now. Um, Rika, I'm going to ask you first, um, maybe it's what would you tell yourself two or three years ago? Um, what do you wish that you would have known two or three years ago? Ooh, um, probably be open. I feel like I am a pretty open person anyways, but just to re reiterate sure, yeah. that. Yeah. I think, I think the biggest thing is, yeah, just be open to new experiences and be open. What's thrown, be open to what's thrown your way because you genuinely never know who you're going to bump elbows with or what you're going to get to experience because of it. So yeah, be open. Yeah. And I feel like Carrie uses the term collisions, right? You never know what collisions yes. can come from it. Because, yeah, the, to me, in that sense, that's like organic, um, like cool things that might come up, right? Opening up the surface area for serendipity is, I think, what I've heard um, podcaster like refer to it before. And I'm like, oh, I like that. It's I like, like that. you can't meet new people if you stay at home in your corner of your house all the time <laughs> under a blanket. Yes. <laughs> but you can't go out and be so, like, I don't want to call it strategic, but like feel like you have an agenda. I'm going to talk to X person who's going to introduce mm -hmm. me to Y person, I'm going to do Z. It's like, ooh, like, I don't want that yeah. either. So what's what's the thing in the middle? And it sounds like, um, you know, being open and inviting those collisions. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Sarah, yeah. what advice would you give? And I think we talked about this one, but it's all those little experiences add mm. up to really great things. And so you may not see it at the time and you might not recognize it, but all of those sort of off the wall experiences that you don't expect to get into um, or that you wish you weren't in <laughs> really add up to some significant learning that down the road will 
impact you in ways that you didn't know or didn't think. Um, and so just, you know, may not be the best feeling at the time, but embracing those experiences <laughs> and learning what you can from them, um, because guaranteed they will pop up in ways that you're like, oh, now I get it, um, which which are important. And, you know, those little aha moments two years later where you're like, oh, now I know what she meant. Um, <laughs> are really are really helpful and so just embrace the experience and have fun like have fun enjoy it and make it what you can mm -hmm. yeah love it uh last question um people love or hate this one uh, when i ask them what their definition of success is so who would like to take the hot seat first how I'll do you first. define success <laughs> Ooh, i like it me <laughs> i'm like me that way if i say a good one you have to make up something else <laughs> you got me on that one okay fair um so really for me it's being able to make an impact and have fun like those are the things that uh mean success for me. I'm able to have an impact in a way that is meaningful for me and to others and have fun doing it. Beat that. Oh, heck. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, in a similar similar vein, I would say like make change. Like I want to be able to have, again, it's, I guess it comes back to impact, Kara. So I'm taking that from you. <laughs> uh, but um, I like ch making change and having impact, but success to me is also like being very happy and content with where I am too. Like not all the time. I don't have to be happy all the time, <laughs> but still like enjoying what I'm doing and having that excitement about, about my day to day. So I think it's a bit of a twofold creating the impact, but also, also being happy with where I am and content. Mm, That's yeah. not that different from having impact. <laughs> and, but whatever. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> oh, potato, <yeah>. potato. <laughs> yeah. on the bright side, like this. So, like, let's be honest. On the bright side, I think that's one of the reasons why Rika and I are able to work yeah. together. Like, yeah. like we can, because yeah. our values and what we think is important are aligned, right? Mm -hmm. Like, having the impact is important to both of us, and we also want to have fun. So. Win-win. Yeah. <laughs> Completely. Um, if you, I guess I just want to expand this and really hit the hit the point home. If you are in a job interview or you're, you know, doing a client, uh, like an employer visit and it just feels wrong or it feels, you know, go with that gut, like go mm -hmm. somewhere else. Um, or if, you know, yeah, just, just go with it because sometimes um, like the people are what makes it, make it work, right? How we get there is something that we can figure out together. But if you're not aligned on, you know, that we both care about the mission, we both care about where we want to go, then the rest of it is going to be really, really, really difficult um, and likely impossible to get to. Yep. Mm -hmm. I would agree fully with that statement. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So any other things that either of you would like to add? Is there any contact info? Can I link um, your LinkedIn below if anybody wants to get in touch with you directly? What's the best way for them to do so? Um, LinkedIn is there. I'm also, Sammy, feel free to share my um, email if folks want to mm -hmm. reach out directly. Um, I'd give you my Instagram, but all you get is dog pictures. So I'm not sure <laughs> What, what you want to come for, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say LinkedIn and email is totally fine. Um, or if you want to check out my Instagram as well, because I usually post when I'm teaching yoga. If anyone wants to come to a yoga class, <laughs> when is that Tuesday, Thursday? Yeah, <laughs> usually Tuesday, Tuesday nights. Tuesday, Tuesday nights, nights. I nice. teach nice. teach some power flows. Um, nice. but. Well, yeah, no, thank you. Just a big thank you to you, Sam. It's been awesome. Like I didn't have you as a professor in my time at Dalhousie, but it's been awesome getting to to see how you bring your classes to life. And I wish I wish I could have been a student in one of your classes because it seems um, it, I feel like as a student, it's what you crave is to have that experiential piece that you don't always get. Um, so I haven't been part of your class, but it sounds like it would be awesome. And I just I feel very honored to have been along for the ride with you over the course of the semester. And Excited to see where it goes from here. Yes, I echo uh, that. For being a partner in crime with us uh, as the first instructor in there and, and making it an awesome experience and uh, working with us to just push the bounds and figure out how we can do things different. 
So we, we, we feel very lucky uh, that it was you who was in there first. <laughs> Likewise, I uh, can't imagine doing this with anybody else. And, um, you know, I would like to acknowledge like Dal as being very supportive and being, you know, open um, for this arrangement. And then also to select me uh, to be in here and even like behind the scenes. So this is um, this format of this podcast is being supported by just as many people off camera <laughs> yes. as have on camera. And so, you know, big round of applause uh, to Lori Bald, to Mallory, to Nicole. Like I am um, in our Dalhousie resources. So it's uh, really cool when like-minded people can get together and watch the collisions happen. So thank you very much, ladies, and I will see you at the greenhouse.